Now, one of the great secrets of Michelin star restaurants is that a lot of them use Nespresso coffee machines, even though you're paying hundreds of pounds sometimes for a meal there. And what the study showed was that um, it went into a it went into a uh, into a few Michelin star restaurants and it gave the punters in the restaurant a human made uh, coffee and an espresso made coffee. And it turned out that people actually preferred the Nespresso coffee. They thought it was nicer. So in other words, when you buy a really, really expensive Nespresso machine, that robot is actually better at making a coffee than a person. But then when the survey people told the punters in the Michelin star restaurant that, a coffee, that the coffee had been made by a robot, the people were furious even though they had preferred it to the, machine, to, the, uh, to the human made coffee. And I think that gets to an important truth about, about work these days. As, as I say, people enjoy the experience of having people around them when they're, when they're uh, buying, and, buying and selling things. And so I think as those kind of jobs become more and more common, I think there's good reason to think that robots are not gonna be as destructive as a lot of people think they will be. So I hope I've convinced you of that. Um, I'm obviously very happy to take any questions and thank you very much for listening. During the pandemic, um, there's, uh, I think there's been like a record number of uh, IPOs and uh, companies taking their, um, t- going public. Um, do you, is that because of COVID that they're doing it? They're seeing like an opportunity there or are they just going ahead despite COVID? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I mean, people thought at the beginning of the pandemic that there were going to be way fewer because they they really dried up in in the spring of 2020. But as you as you rightly say, they've 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 come they've come rushing back. I think really the main reason for this is 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 to do with uh, pretty pretty sort of generous funding uh, conditions that are in place at the moment. Uh, people are able to command very high prices when they IPO, and that's 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 hugely attractive so it's it's really a function of of the sort of massive interventions that particularly the fed has done in the us but i think i mean that's a sort of cynical way of looking at it i think there is something else going on though and this is not just going on in the us it's going on elsewhere and no one really knows exactly why but what you've seen in the past year particularly in the second half of 2020 is a massive surge in startups so these these are companies that are not ipoing they're too small to IPO. They're just kind of like, you know, ideas that are trying to get off the ground. But you see an absolutely massive surge in startups in the US, but not just the US, in Canada, France, the UK, not absolutely everywhere, but, but, but in other places too. So, and I think that's basically because you get a bunch of entrepreneurs who are spotting gaps in the market that the pandemic has created and they're rushing to fill those gaps. So on the one hand, you might say, oh yeah, all these IPOs is just, you know, it's just because of, lacks funding but I, I think it might also be the case that there is a bit of a sort of sense of I don't know like a bit of a sense that we can kind of get things done and, and entrepreneur entrepreneurialism is having a bit of a moment so I, I would say that's probably playing a role as well. Thank you I, I was actually wondering about the um, AI bit that you were talking about earlier I remember during uh, Hillary's campaign she had this remark where she was like you know uh, AI is going to take over anyway, we're going to just retrain, and that lost her like a whole slew of votes. Yeah. And then Andrew Yang, I remember he was saying something along the lines of, uh, you know, if AI takes things over, I'll give you this $100 a month or whatever it was, and then you can pursue your hobby as a career, right? And people can open cookie shops and and start playing guitar, you know. Uh, so both of those reactions, I think, with like open acceptance of AI didn't really go over well. So has there ever been historically someone that's encouraged AI and it's been taken on positively or are we still kind of waiting for that moment since it's inevitably coming anyway? Yeah, it's a great question. So there was this famous um, speech that that, that uh, John Maynard Keynes gave about 100 years ago where he basically talked about the role of technology in in, in life. And he made this prediction that by, I can't remember exactly when, the year 2000 or something, we'd all be working about 12 uh, 12 hours a week, something like that. Because there'd be, technology would be doing all this stuff for us and we'd have um, a lot more time on our hands. And so there was this question of, um, you know, what we do with the rest of our time. Obviously that hasn't hasn't come to pass. Um, Have there been instances where uh, people have been put out of work by technology. Absolutely, yes. 
that is definitely something that's happened. It's happened in lots of industries. I think the thing that is important there is that um, what has typically happened going back hundreds of years is that people whose jobs have been changed or in some cases eliminated by technology have basically always eventually been able to find new jobs. And that is not to say that the transition is easy because for, for a lot of people, it isn't easy. And I think that's the kind of thing that Hillary was trying to get at, um, that you need to have that sort of government support in place for, um, for that. I think, the, I, think the, I think the country that does it best is probably Denmark. So Denmark is a highly technologically advanced country. Um, it is somewhere where there's lots of startups, where people are doing incredibly kind of advanced things. But what Denmark does really well, better than basically any other country, is it ensures that when you move from one job to another, say if your job is eliminated for one reason or another, that your income is basically completely protected as you look for another job. So you lose your job and, this, and the state won't, it won't pay you 100%, but for a lot of people it will pay pretty close and for most people it will pay about 90%. And they, they, do, you know, they do have rules that say, we, we, we are expecting you to, to really try hard and find a new job. Like that, that is something we expect of you. And if you are not trying hard, we will take away the money we're paying you. But what the evidence from Denmark shows is that people are actually quite sort of, people aren't really as scared of technology or technological advance in, in, in Denmark as they might be in the US or the UK, because they know if they're one of those unlucky people where there's some amazing invention that eliminates their job, that the state will be there to support them and train them and find them something new. So I think there's a lot that we can learn from there. I think that's probably the best place that does it well. Okay, guys. Have a good day. Bye, Karen. Thank you.